Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you are doing well and you are doing good with Power Automate. So in this uh, video, we are going to discuss few tips and tricks how to work with Power Automate effectively in an optimized manner. So I have jotted down a few 10 points which will make you to feel comfortable and as well as work with Power Automate in an effective way. So we are looking at all these 10 points one by one. So I'm just uh, switching to my Power Automate environment. So I have just opened one of the sample workflow which I've created for any of my earlier video. So this uh, flow we would be taking an example to go through all these points. So first tip is add a trigger condition to your flow. So what that means? So that means you would not like your flow to trigger yeah, every time even when it's not required so when I say that for example I'm having one uh, approval list and that approval list is being given to my business users where they usually enter data and uh, enter approvers and after they submit that or check that uh, sent for approval uh, option then only that uh, flow should start so if I go back to my flow, so right now my flow is created when an item is modified. So for example, if a business user is just creating that uh, item in a draft mode, then also this uh, action or this uh, uh, trigger would happen and uh, this flow execution would start. So in that case, either you have to use any of the condition. For example, this send for approval is true, then it should trigger. So if you are like using this condition, then on that condition basis you can decide over but what if I can stop the workflow or the flow on this trigger condition itself rather than like triggering it off so we can do that and that's an optimized way of doing it so we should follow this so if you click on this three dot you would see that I have an option of this settings and under this settings if you scroll down you can see trigger condition so in this trigger condition here itself you can make your flow to decide whether it should run or not so for example i can say if equals my this uh, trigger body of this flow so you can just use trigger body and you can use that uh, your column name so that is send for approval if that is yes then only this trigger should happen so that would actually uh, reduce your number of runs of this flow it, I mean like unnecessary it would not trigger it so only if this condition is met then only it, we can go to the subsequent steps so in this fashion you can add any other trigger condition and if you keep on adding then you have to remove this uh, under it because this will automatically take that as an or condition so by default it's an R condition and you can also like take a, a peek at the code what it's doing in behind the scenes is taking an input which the connection you have provided and and split splitting on this one and when you add up the condition that would add up to this JSON again. So that's the right way of like making a trigger to happen making a flow to run. So that was tip one and if I go always give a name to action so it's a recommended tip if you are working on your flow you might be uh, able to understand your flow for few days for few weeks but after one year or 12 months definitely like it would be difficult for you as well to judge like what your flow is doing so give name to each and every condition for example this condition I am checking so I can just rename it condition to check if flow condition to check if uh, sent for approval is set to true so if, if you are setting this uh, naming conventions or naming to your actions then it's good for you as well and for your colleagues as well when, when you are going to share this flow to understand because sometimes this flow gets very cumbersome and very difficult to understand so this thing would give you a brief about this uh, 
condition as well as like other advantages would be if uh, let's say I'm having this update action and if I keep copying this update action then it would create update item 4, 5, 6, 7 so even like that would be like a bit of confusing it's better to rename it and third one is again like it's same as second but the uh, more interesting part is like you can add a note to your this uh, action so why is required for example in this apply to each i'm creating task and splitting up the string and then doing some operations so it would be creating some commenting session for me so that i can just add up my notes so that it can be referred in future for example uh, uh, act action to create multiple approval tasks and read or get the approval outputs or output in a string so that's how you can just simply like by looking at this node you would understand okay so this entire bunch of action is doing this stuff so it's useful to add up because like if you are creating business process flows it may can go to like a number of steps so it's easy to uh, write in this fashion fourth one is copy paste your actions so this is very useful why because for example if you are working this uh, uh, apply to each where you are having like few actions or you are using scopes then also you sort of have the bunch of actions so it, uh, rather than creating each and every action again and again what you may use is just click on this copy to my clipboard and if you go to your different branch you would like to do the same sort of operation you can just go to clip my board and you can just click on apply to each so it will copy the entire it will copy the entire batch of actions over here and everything would come up including your comments so this is how this is a useful tip so that rather than creating individual tasks again and again just do that copy paste third one is use compose action instead of variables and this one is pretty important because if you are working with complex flows where you would like to have like 10 12 15 variables then it would be very difficult or even it would be not uh, recommended from the this uh, flow efficiency perspective because when when you create 15 14 variables and it will keep the context of those variable in the entire flow and so that would not be good for your flow performance as well so rather than like a initializing flow or assigning or setting values to flow you can simply use the data operations so i can show you how you can use that if you click on plus add an action and if you type in data so data operation set uh, this entire set will give you a few actions for example this compose create csv table create html table so this html table is very interesting so if you want to like build up html and save somewhere then uh, you can simply use this data operation filter array join and these are very useful actions and especially this compose one if you would like to uh, for example do some expressions so probably this is the right place to do that for example if I am just choosing out some let's say approver emails because it's a multi uh, this is a multi people picker field so this have set up that into the apply to each and now I, if I go back to my this compose and if I just copy this operation if I just paste it you will see that it gives me the entire this items apply to each and email so now this column I can use I can just remove the entire at the rate and uh, curly braces now this I can use as in for example I'm, I would like to split these approval emails on semicolon then I can just simply do this by using this compose action so it will just give me the splitted uh, all the email addresses with that semicolon so this gives me an array so it automatically converts the output based on the input type so whatever expression it's evaluating it will convert based on it for example if i'm passing it a string it will just 
read that as string if I am just typing for example some integer so the output would be the in the integer format so right now it's a splitting so it gives me array so this is a pretty cool way of like uh, working with the inputs and uh, rather than using the variables just use this compose action so it's very powerful so I'm just deleting it can and deleting this entire patch All right so now going to the next step apply to each concurrency so if you want to improve your performance of your flow rather than like flow running for one minute two minute because it can have like multiple actions so you can what you can do like for your apply to each so major of the time for the complex one complex flow we may want to use like some operations kind of apply to each so you can just click on this apply to each three dots and under the setting you can set the concurrency control so if i just enable it it will by default degree of parallelism is 20 so you can just do it 50 at max so that would split up your or you, that would actually create internal concurrence branch for this apply to each so rather than waiting for every action sequentially for example in this apply to each if i'm creating task sequentially then i can just simply turn on this concurrency control and at the same time i'll be getting all my tasks for my all the approvers so this is also like a very important tip if you would like to improve the efficiency or the the time execution of your this uh, flow and uh, after that i can use uh, this date formatting so this is also very interesting one because if you are creating flows in the real time for your business then this is the common thing where we have to do the date operations and this date time action set is pretty interesting so you can convert for example if you are uh, your users are creating your items in the uh, ISTRs or the CTRs then you would like to control uh, change them to the EST timings so you can use this convert time zones you can get the current time if you would like to compare something and specifically specifically if you would like to trigger that if you would like to create this as a scheduler and would like to do some operation after some set of time then you can just simply say add to time just have this current date you can specify the interval and after that you can just simply specify a day a day a week a minute or based on the interval time unit you would like to have so this set this, this uh, date set actions would also be very useful and i really like in each and every flow if where you are working with the real time business flows then you would require to use this date time actions so this is pretty cool as well and after that parallel branching so this one specifically in this flow where so this flow is approval uh, approval flow demo so where i am creating tasks for my approvals and as well as i am in a parallel branch and checking the status of those tasks and why because i would like to send the reminders to those approvers who have not completed their task so for that rather than because i don't have anything to check within my sequential action fashion so that's why i created this parallel branch and this do until will keep on pinging my this flow checking my flow condition for those approvers and then if the task is not completed it will send out the uh, emails reminder emails so this sort of fashion this sort of action you can only do in the parallel branch where you can just your parallel branch would be doing some set of option operations whether uh, if your left branch is like waiting for something and how you can do that is you need to just like click on this plus icon and add a parallel branch that would create one parallel branch for you and if you just cancel it it will just go back to the normal condition so you need to decide like based on your flow logic so this parallel branch will give you a uh, good hand to maintain your flow like if, if that wants to do some parallel actions in the same flow logic and the next one is flow checker so this is an inbuilt flow checker tool given by flow if you click on this it will give you all the errors warnings so whatever your flow is having so errors you probably like you have to remove errors before your flow gets activated or 
before you click on save uh, your flow and warnings you can ignore the warnings but uh, still warnings is good to read why because let's say it's giving me warning that action in this flow may result in infinite trigger because i am doing this update action in apply to each action so that means like it will keep on running if that condition would be still there there would not be any exit then it will be an infinite loop so you may check like whether your flow is like actually working in a desired fashion or not using this flow checker and besides this only like one test button is there you can simply click on manual or automatic testing so before like doing or before letting it run by a business user you can just simply do a couple of testing with your flow that could be manually and automatically based on your trigger whatever you decide so these are two useful tools within the flow checker and the most important one is sharing of flow because by default this flow would be listed under your cloud flows list and if you are there then you would you are the only owner of this flow so your team members would not able to see this flow and there is no way of getting to uh, using uh, power uh, this power platform admin as well if this, this flow is created by the individual user you can't get in so do share this with your team so that the teams can handle this flow when you are not with the organization or even when you are on vacation so these are again a tip after creating creation of your flow and testing of flow please do share this with your team members or assign at least one owner so that in your absence that person can take care of it so these are the 10 tips and tricks like which is which if which are useful for the beginners who are, have started just working on flows and would like to make the flow work in an optimized manner and if you feel it useful then please drop your comments like and subscribe to the channel thank you